What's going on, Savage Life family? Today I'm going to be talking about things to avoid when investing with margin. I'm gonna go ahead and hop right into it, quick and easy, straight to the point. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start off looking at this stock here, Marine Petroleum Trust. Oh man, if you could see the bosses behind me. But this here is a extremely volatile stock right here and when you're using margin you want to completely avoid stocks like these stocks that move instantly dollars in in a matter of days now we're i'm gonna go ahead and show you this chart right here you see how this here is not volatile it's extremely stable from august 3rd all the way to october 7th and then out of nowhere it's just bam 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 you do not and I am telling you this from the bottom of my heart, you do not wanna be putting your margin, money that is being borrowed in companies that are moving just like this. Uh, another heads up, if you click on the buying power here and you look at the maintenance requirement, if it's requiring you to maintain 100% of the actual margin, that is an absolute no and an absolute problem. Now, in my recent videos, I explain what initial requirement, maintenance requirement is, is how to leverage, uh, how to leverage using margin, I believe the video was called. You could go ahead and there, but when investing with margin, you want to avoid using anything with a maintenance margin, uh, maintenance requirement that's actually above 60%. So if it's above 60%, you'd want to completely avoid it unless you absolutely know what you're doing or you have some sort of insider information. And if you do, go ahead and hit me in the DMs and let me know because we are all trying to make some savage money here. Step number two, you all heard the term, don't ever put all your eggs in one basket and we know why especially when investing you want to have a diverse portfolio and if you are not willing to put your own money all into one stock what gives you the right or makes you think it's smart to use borrowed money to put it all into one stock like I've seen people put every single penny they own into Tesla because they thought it was gonna skyrocket back up after the five to one split. Hopefully they're still holding on to it, but it's going to take an extremely long time for it to get to the point that it was before the split at the $2,000 price point. He basically bought it at $480, and if you look at Tesla's price now, it's $380, so ouch, took a big burn. You don't wanna do that. You wanna spread your eggs in multiple baskets, if you get that. Okay, next one, you want to avoid hype stocks with absolutely no fundamentals. Now, we all heard of this stock here, Workhorse, extremely hype stock, jumped all the way to $30, but if you look at the balance sheet, which I hope every one of you look at a balance sheet before you jump into and put your money into a company, it is a breakdown of the money flow in the company. So you wanna look at the total assets. This here shows 50,674, but it goes by millions, so it's actually 50,674,000 is what they have in total assets. But if we look at total liabilities here, it is currently 85 million, so simple stuff. If they obviously have insanely higher liabilities than assets, it's not a safe bet to risk your money in there. Unless they have something in a works like Obviously, they're supposed to have this USPS contract under the works and they have other contracts being put through. So if you're extremely informed about that and you have high hopes and aspirations for the company, then go right ahead. But these are the basic fundamentals that you have to understand. Think about it this way. If you have a friend, right? and he currently owes $200,000 in student loans. He broke up with his ex and owes her $5,000. And he has Yeezy's off-white jacket, goes up to you and asks you for $2,000. Are you gonna go ahead and lend him money? Of course not because he obviously doesn't spend the money in the right places and you don't believe it's gonna profit you in the long run. Hopefully that got to some people, but you understand what I'm saying. So step number three, and this is absolutely important. I know that it's so hard to see losses 
and um, and sometimes you believe, oh my God, if I hold on to this stock, it's truly gonna skyrocket back up, but you end up losing more than if you would've just sold at the loss. Step number three is going having a stop loss, people. So I know there was a lot of individuals who invested in Hertz, and when they filed for chapter seven bankruptcy, that should have been the major red flag the major red flag before that should have been looking at the balance sheet and seeing they were in major debt before they even uh, filed for Chapter 7. But once they did, they still held on to the company believing that it was going to jump right back up. And their shares became absolutely penniless. Like, they hold no value. So instead of losing, let's say you invested $5,000, instead of losing $2,000, you end up losing the whole $5,000 because you wanna be hard-headed and not stop and cut your losses. So before you buy into a company, you have to have this planned out, okay? Balance sheets have to be in check, fundamentals have to be in check, your stop loss, you have to have a stop loss. So pretty much if you buy into the company at with, with margin and the price is 15 you tell yourself okay if this stock happens to drop below ten dollars i am going to sell it because i cannot afford to take any more losses so pretty much i know all of you heard of american airlines my experience is i had it at the average cost of 18 and my stop loss was at 17 because i told myself if this company doesn't end up recovering due to the pandemic then I'm going to cut my losses short because I'm not willing to hold on to this company in the long term if I'm using borrowed money to jump into it. So, pretty much it ended up dropping to 17. I said, that's it, I'm out. I ended up negative 1,000 on this uh, investment here. And then look at it now, it's at 11, it's at $11. So I would have ended up losing over $5,000, almost $7,000 if I kept on holding on to this stock that's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's all in the psychology, ladies and gentlemen. And that's pretty much it. So if you have those three things down, pretty much you are off to a great start because there's a lot of new Avid investors who just go in and treat the market as a casino and that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to make money we're trying to make profits so if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash that like subscribe and comment all right i'll see you on the next one we are